What's going on, everyone? It's Bales, and welcome back to another AFL Fantasy Round Review post Round 17. Um, another tough week. Uh, now back to back weeks of uh, poor ones. On for- actually, no, I did I okay last week. It was just two of the last three have been bad at a crucial time of the season as well. Um, so just 22.47 for me. Uh, round rank of 70,402, and over rank now is 4.84. Eight, sorry, eight four five. So that dropped me down. Just having a look from last week, uh, two hundred and fifty two spots, which is a shame. Um, because looking at the scores, the the pass score for the week was twenty three twenty three, and there was just a couple of guys I shouldn't have still that cost me. And I'll I'll, I'll chat about it in a sec as well. But it re- this could have been the week. That slips. It's like it's like I'm. Imagine I'm a guy that's in the outfield in cricket. I'm under the ball. I've got the catch, and it slips through my hands. Like it, it sort of. It was there for the taking. A poor week for some coaches, and I could have had that week to really elevate me up. But unfortunately, we didn't have that week. So um, now we're 410 points off the pace of 100 spot. It, it it's not impossible in seven weeks to catch that up. But I've, I've as I've said on the pod last night, I've really got to have like two weeks of top 500 probably in the next couple of weeks. Um, well, two of the next three have got to be really, really strong weeks to to claw it back. Otherwise, we're not we're not much hope, unfortunately. Um, it is doable, but I'm not holding my breath, unfortunately, now. Um, it's sort of, it's going to be good if I can get there. But now just it's almost like top 500, top 200 would be probably the goal from here. But we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, so plus three, negative three from the week. Uh, there's a couple of guys that could have got the plus three, but it's got to go to Josh Dunkley on debut. Um, brought him in. Uh, I was just hoping for a big score, and, and, he, and he delivered uh, with 140 points. So it's now back-to-back scores over 140. He's now 974K. For those coaches that don't have him, he's going to be harder to bring in now because he's now so expensive. So I'm just happy to have him in the team. Um, and, yeah, it was a good score. Um, and negative three, it's got to go to um, Jordan Dawson. Like, 57, like, come on, man. Like, I know it's against Brisbane. He wasn't copying attention either. His worst score for the year, and I think it's, he, that is now his worst score as a Crow. 91% game time, only 16 touches, gave away three free kicks. That's now, what's that, six games in a row he's given at least a free kick away, um, which is very frustrating. Obviously, it's not good when your player's giving away free kicks. But I did mention this on the pod, um, or whatever. It's not going to show up on here, but he scores away from home this season, right? So he got an 89 against Gold Coast, 100 against Frio, 60 against Carlton, 122 against North, okay, he's one good score there. Um, then Collingwood MCG, 117, good score there. Um, 60 against Hawthorne, uh, and then the 57 against Brisbane. So, okay, he had two scores against Collingwood and North Melbourne, which have been good um, away from home. But take away those two, his high score is 100. And every other every other score he's got gone has been below hundred. I don't actually think he's gone below a hundred at home this season. I think they've all been. I think I literally just said they've all been away from home. No, sorry, the Sydney game was the only one that he went under a hundred at home, and that was with the Jordan tab. But every other game he's gone under hundred has been away from home. So very frustrating. I still think he's a top eight mid. I still like his run. St Kilda, Win Hager got injured, so he should be okay. Essendon, he went big against her in the season. Hawthorne, back at home. I expect a response after a poor game against Hawthorne last time. And then Geelong in Geelong, that's another good match up there. So, and then the Bulldogs, we saw what the guys, uh, Port Boys did to them yes, uh, a couple of days ago. So Dawson's fine. He's going to get cheap. People are going to be able to bring him in. It sucks, but hey, um, it is what it is, unfortunately. So he gets my negative three there. But I think, and so actually, before we do, we'll get into all the players and, and discuss it um, now as well. But as always, before we do, if you are enjoying the content around here, smash a big thumbs up on the video. That'd be fantastic. 100 likes is the goal on all our videos. So if we get 100 likes, if you're watching right now, just click the like button below. It takes two seconds and it does really help out the channel. So it's very much appreciated, uh, all the help. But it, it actually helps out a lot more than you guys could uh, could know. So it, uh, very thank you for that. But yeah, so I think the thing I'll start off with before we go to the players is the thing that when Fisher was out, that essentially screwed my week, right? So last week I had the 50-50 call of picking between Will Power and Tom Stewart. I went Will Power with the Collingwood and North matchups and then Stewart had Essendon, who was going to get the Guelphy tag, I didn't anticipate him going to the midfield, but that 50-50 call has now cost me, well, it cost me 20 points last week and it cost me another 65. So it's cost me a good 85, 90 points. So that's a that's a big shift that um, there. And then the other um, sort of one that sort of hit me was with Fisher out, I was going to be going Toby Green out to Andrew Brayshaw. Um, that would have gained me 86 points this week. And then I would have had Fisher who would have scored more than, 
than what Green would have. He probably would have got like a 90 based on that. So that, I would have gained uh, an extra six points on Dunkley and then an extra so – t- so it cost me like 20, 30 points for the, for the week. Um, so it's not huge, but it would have got rid of Toby Green, would have had Brayshaw. But then again, Dunkley's there. So it's not as big a deal because of Dunkley going big. But it's just a couple of those things. Like I shouldn't have Toby Green – it would have been great to have jumped off sex in this week. Uh, I wish I didn't have power. So those guys there are the three that really let me down. And if they had solid scores, I would have been okay. But it is what it is. But let's get in the players anyway. So Lockie Whitford, 106. Yeah, very, very happy with that. Um, Chincotta didn't really tag him from what I've heard. I watched. I was watching the other game with the watch long. But from what I heard, Chincotta went to Cogs, which is interesting. Uh, but Whitfield f- struggled in the first half. Second half, though, when Giants got on top, 106. Uh, he's got Richmond this week. So that's a really good match up there. And definitely going to be a potential VC shout. Um, there, I believe, unless they play later in the round. That would be the only uh, question there. Giants play, actually, they play uh, the second last game. So maybe it could be a captain chat, to be fair. Halfbacks are going better than mids this year. Luke Ryan 101 against Richmond in, in wet conditions was pretty solid. Uh, took plenty of kickouts as well, which I was really happy about. Good to see defence, though. Like, Dacos 102 was solid on fr- uh, Friday night. Uh, quiet first half, but got going the second half. Um Nick Martin, 97, was solid. Had a, only a six-point last quarter. That was disappointing. 105 from Young was a good response. It was just bloody Will Power that let me down. If I had a sheasel there, that would have been really good. But So defense, all, all in all, was solid. But yeah, so Luke Ryan, I'm um, just having a look here at how many kick-ins he had. So Richmond with the 12 behinds. He had the six kick-ins. Clark had three. H2, Cox, one. So again, still got the more of the kick-ins. But he played 100% game, uh, game time as well, which was good. So I think Luke Ryan... He's got good matchups to come. He's got, is it Melbourne this week? Uh, no, Hawthorne this week down at Utahs, which could be good. And then he's got Hawth- uh, Mel- Melbourne and then West Coast. So a couple of good matchups to come. I think Ryan's still fine. I'm not really worrying about him um, and trading him out. And obviously, I mentioned those. Sean Maker, 49, was okay. Obviously, he's just making good cash on the bench. And then Reed obviously not playing still. Um, in the midfield, though, this has been the tail all season. You have some guys that struggle and some guys that go big. So Errol Goulden only had a three-point last quarter. That was disappointing. I thought he was going to go massive today. Um, that's now back-to-back weeks of lower scores for Goulden. He's got North this week, so good match up there. Uh, the Bont um, was good in the last quarter. Um, the first three quarters, he was pretty quiet. Only 51 points, 49 in the last quarter. <laughs> Saved it and jumped up to get 100. But again, that's what Bont is, though. Bont's just a very, very good player. So um, Josh Dunkley, 140. As I said, fantastic on debut. Very, very happy bringing him in. And yeah, he's now got West Coast this week. So he's going to be another decent shout for a VC this week. Jordan Dawson, as I mentioned, poor. But he's got um, St. Kill this week with no win. Hager, so I'm hoping for a bounce back. Um, plenty of marks as well that St. Kill to give up. And back at home, hopefully Dawson goes well. Zach Merritt, 120, was good on uh, Friday night. I mentioned this on the pod as well. But a few people on the watch song asked me, a few people uh, like message me and stuff like that saying, do I take Merritt's 120? And this does show because the two popular captain options on Sunday was Gordon who got a 90 and Gordon who got 71. That's why we, I think that's why we've got to bank. When points are there, I think it is safer to bank points because more can go right than wrong. That's I've said that saying a number of times. And even a guy, a few, I know someone went Sarong captain uh, and they had Merritt VC and that cost them 43 points, which is a, a decent swing. So, yeah, I just think it just shows that if you get... I'm always a 110 plus um, coach. If I get a 110 plus, I take it. But, yeah, 120, you've got to take it. And it just showed this week. Caleb Strong, 77. He's an issue now. Fairly big issue as well. Um, again, luxury more because he's still averaging 106 for the year. But he started well, right, with the three good scores at the start of the year. 161, 125, 118. Since then... He's only got one score over 107, and in his last four, he's gone below 100, all four, and his high score was a 95. He's got two good matchups to come, Hawthorne, well, three. Actually, probably like, he's got he's got good matchups to come, right? So I'm not trading out personally, but if someone was considering to trade him out, I couldn't sort of tell them no, because he's just not getting it done so wrong, unfortunately. Uh, getting a lot of touch, he got 27 on the weekend, but not only one mark, two tackles, that's just not good enough. Not going to get it done. So, unfortunately, he's a bit of a, uh, an issue in the midfield at the moment. Hopefully, he can respond soon. Um, Tom Green was really good. Uh, massive third quarter. And uh, at the end of the day, even if a player is struggling, it's just good to see a player just get to a, a solid score. And a 107, solid enough. Um, makes a little bit more cash there. And, yeah, he's got Richmond this week as well. Um, I'm hoping that another good score is coming for Tom Green. Connor Rosie was amazing. Uh, 147. I didn't expect him to go that that big. Um, obviously, huge first quarter with 61 points. 
60K made this week, 38 break in. If you don't have Connor Rosie, this is, it's not the last week to jump on, but it's the last really good week to jump on. Because if you jumped on last week or the week before, it's great, but you want to jump on him now. He's making, he's actually making cash now, um, and he's also performing better than a lot of other mids at the moment. So I know he got 95 last week, but he's got a couple of tons uh, in between that. So for me, Rosie, you've got to, you've got to jump on. Uh, if you don't have him, uh, and he fits your team, obviously. Kane McCaw, 52, was solid enough as well, and Lawson Humphreys was good as well. Made a bit of cash there, um, and he's, he's making good cash. Negative 19 break even now, so we should be good for cash gender over the next few weeks. Um, Gorn, 71, was disappointing. Obviously, got subbed out. I believe it was the, near the end of the third quarter. Was on track for 100. Uh, I think he just kicked the goal. Bit of an ankle um, tweak, but Melbourne have said it was precautionary, which is no surprise, their prize possession uh, in Gorn. So... Uh, be, be up against uh, who who was he up against? Was it um, who are they playing this week? Um, Essendon. That's right, Essendon. So hopefully he goes okay. Um, and bounces back. But it's been now three poor scores in a row for Gorn. So um, yeah, there's no no more of this. Uh, after he gets a poor score, he goes big because he didn't. So um, but yeah, obviously use a loop to take merit. So Marshall one oh six is good. Tough matchup against Grundy. Kicked a couple of goals, which is good as well. No Campbell, which was the most positive thing. So, and the fact that St. Kilda won as well with no Campbell is good. So hopefully Campbell's not there um, and coming back in. And then it's just Marshall because Crow's a good matchup this week. Then he's got West Coast, Essendon, Brisbane, Richmond. So a decent enough run home as well. And he's got the ceiling. So Marshall hopefully puts up some good scores on the run home. Then we go into the forward line. Sam Flanders with an 87. Um... Yeah, it's just been a little bit underwhelming since he's moved into the midfield. Not a huge score, but Took, we don't know how long he's out for, but if he's out for any length of period of time, more CBAs and more responsibility in there for Flanders. I know that Took hasn't been a massive CBA guy um, last few weeks with Flanders going back in there, but I'm just having a look here at the CBAs. Flanders was third in line. It was Raul and Anderson, clearly number one and two. Um, and then Flanders was third, uh, and then you had Graham and Took were down the bottom there with a mix of like Humphrey and Ainsworth getting a couple um, to round out there. But Flanders will be fine, still top six forward, just obviously we want him to put some more of these bigger scores up. Zorko, good as well, 104. Again, was only on 31 points at half time uh, and got to 104, so strong second half, good last quarter. No worries about him. I've got him currently as my number one forward if I was to rank them at the moment. Heaney, 105. Obviously, good in a sense that he went back over 100. I believe that's... Is that his first 100 in a few weeks now? Um, if I go to the stats... Yeah, a couple of weeks, obviously been under, but back over 100. The obviously problem thing is, uh, obviously by the time you guys are watching this video, most of you will have known if Heaney's been suspended or not. Um, I think he'll get a week or two. Um, two potentially, but I think it'll be a week. That They're going to challenge it. Like Heaney, like They'll try and challenge it. There's a Brownlow on the line for potentially for Heaney there. Sydney won't want to lose Heaney for any sort of period of time. They just lost. They want to respond against North, who have been tricky to play um, of late as well. But I expect him to be offered a week by the MRO, which is unfortunate because um, at a time when there's a few other issues in my, t in, in my team and other people's teams, we don't want to be trading out guys. But I'll probably hold Heaney anyway because I'd rather trade someone else like a Sexton um, and play a rookie for a week than, uh, play, than just trade Heaney. So... Yeah, hopefully he's not suspended, but I, th I think he will be because they did change the rules pre-season. Any sort of hit of the arms or elbows or anything behind the ball, accidental or not, is is most cases, most cases being the, the grey area, um, will be great as intentional. So whether they have this as most cases and it, or if it was just clumsy and it was careless, I don't know. But hopefully he's not suspended, but we'll have to see. Jai Caldwell, 130. I've got him as number, my, number, my number two forward now. 130 points. His game time was a bit lower, which is a shame after back-to-back -back good um, games. But again, 30 disposal, six marks, seven takes. Getting marks now, which is good. Tackles have, have normally been there. Kicked a goal as well. Has gone over 125 in his last three. He's the second highest averaging player in the last three games as well behind Josh Dunkley. So yeah, for me, Caldwell is on fire. 912K now, more expensive than Heaney. And he's probably going to be more expensive than a Zorko very soon, the way he's going. His break-in will still be low. 62. If you don't have him, I've said this for probably three or four weeks in a row now, you need to jump on. Um, he's going to be a top six and he's putting up good scores and you're missing out, so you need to jump on. Sexton can go 55, back-to-back -back 70s before that. He's just got to go. He could even be dropped this week. Uh, Damien Hope is obviously not happy with uh, their performance. Uh, I could easily see Buderick coming back in for Sexton this week, so Sexton's got to go. Toby Green disappointing with a couple of goals with 60. Um, I, I'm relieved that he's not suspended. I thought he was going to get suspended for that um, sort of that 
late here on Kemp. But Richmond this week, I'm going to obviously have to hold anyway, but good matchup. So I'll be holding and hoping he can put up a good score there. Uh, Richard, 34, was disappointing. Um, he'll probably hold his spot, though, because Carl- Collingwood got a few injuries and he still looked good besides this week. Hutchinson, 64 with 10 tackles was solid. And Dowling, um, 49, struggled. I think he gave away a number of free kicks as well. A few of them were a little bit unlucky. I think he gave away five in the end. Yeah, five. So, and again, on a different day, that's a that's a sixty seventy score. So, I still think he's fine. Nineteen touches. He'll he'll keep he'll keep playing, um, making good cash as well. He'll be a good loop uh, potentially if Heaney misses. I'll be able to loop like a Richards and Dowling because Richards plays Friday, Heaney plays first game Saturday. So I can see Richards, and if not, I'll just play Dowling. So, and that's what we're probably looking at there. So. But yeah, so that's uh, how we were for round 17. Obviously not great. Um, I need a lot to go my way now to even get close to top 100. So now it's just about getting the best rank we can, right? So, which is which is a shame. I thought maybe this could have been a year that we get um, top 100. But uh, in terms of early trade plans, uh, Powell for me has to go and also uh, Sexton. Um, it's a shame. I had a look just before I recorded this video. Uh, Will Powell um, to McKercher and Sexton to Dylan Moore on 4K short. If I'd gone Manor instead of Humphreys last week, I could have got it done. Um, unfortunately, uh, I uh, sort of didn't really take it that into account too much um, when I was doing that. I know that Gold Coast paid before, so I probably should have, but it is what it is. Um, but yeah, so at this stage, I'm probably looking at going Will Power to Tom Stewart and then Sexton to Matt Kennedy. Um, I probably want like a Zach Fisher instead, but I can't afford um fisher so it'll just be a matt kennedy who's been pretty good he's got bulldogs obviously we saw what the port mids did last week uh and uh then he's got north melbourne i believe uh, the week after so a couple of good matchups coming up for for kennedy there he's got 300s in a row if he can make some cash and maybe i can sideways to a fisher or dylan moore in a week or two maybe that's what i'll probably look at doing um with him there so yeah that's probably what i'm planning on doing i have Maybe thought about if Sexton holds this spot, do I just hold him and just go a rookie down and then go Will Powell up? But I think Sexton's got to go. And I could always keep Powell for a week um, instead of Stewart and just go rookie down and go Sexton to more. That's always a play as well. I just think Powell against Port is too risky to be holding, um, especially because he saved that score with a 33 point um, 33 point last quarter. So yeah, um, disappointing, but he's got to go. So that's what I'm currently looking at doing. But uh, let me know in the comments below, guys, how you guys went in round 17. Let me know your plus threes, your negative threes, um, your sort of your score, your rank, uh, and your overall rank and weekly rank and stuff like that. And if you've got any trade questions, put them in the comments below. If you've got any other questions as well, head to ask me on Q, spelled QU.com forward slash AFL Fantasy Fanatics. You can ask me questions in regards to your trades, uh, captains, advice captains, draft questions. You can send through your whole team. You can put through screenshots now. So if you want to do that, link is at the very uh, top of the description um, as well. So uh, small fee um, is there, um, but it does help support the channel, but also gives you an in-depth response that more than what I can give you in the comments below or an individual message, and it goes in an audio response uh, directly to your uh, email. So you can listen back to it as many times as you want. So but yeah, if you want to hit that up and help support the channel, then uh, link is in the description. So make sure you smash like on the video, 100 likes. Make sure you... Uh, smash that goal out that'd be fantastic you guys can um just click it takes two seconds um and then also make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already uh we're obviously trying to get to 2600 subscribers and then 3k is the next big goal so if you can help us get to there that'd be very much appreciated so i'll be we'll be back tomorrow night for the q a as always and then uh wednesday trade talks thursday captains and we get into it again on friday so uh, yeah i want to forget about this weekend it was a tough one but yeah hopefully uh next weekend will be a lot better so thanks guys for tuning in Uh, Have a good couple of days and we'll see you tomorrow for the Q&A. So I'm out. Cheers.